So, what I've brought uh, once again is this LCR meter of this company GW Instack. And um, I've already switched it on. And as last time, it's in this basic mode where it's measuring capacitance. So we can switch it uh, with measurement setup and go down and then uh, use here the more setting to, for example, measure LS and RS, which stands for series inductance and series resistance. So um, with this setting, we can measure what we really have here, also what we had in our exercise task. So some series resistance, some series inductance of some inductor. Okay, and as said, I have different inductors and uh, maybe we start with this one that I've already shown. Um, it's from company RS, as you can see, and it's labeled as 470 microhenry and specified for a current of 4 ampere. So, of course, um, and, and as you can see, so it, it has quite thick wires. There will be also some core in there, and then you can imagine that the wires are just um, wound like this to form a coil. Um, and as we've discussed for some for capacitor, uh, it's if you want to have high capacitance, you need to have large plates, you need to have small distance, but then small distance also uh, you get problems if the voltage is too high because then you get um, the, the, the dielectric material is destroyed because you get a voltage breakthrough. And so here's the same. You can, yeah, it's, it's no problem to build a high inductance because then you just need to have a very long wire, very thin wire, but a thin wire will not carry current. Okay, so now I've connected this. Um, th th there's the connection. And I go back to measure. And so then you can see, okay, we have 478 something microhenry and just 0 0.11 ohm, which is really amazing. And that's why you can also feed this high current through there of 4 ampere. But you, you, you can imagine if you, um, yeah, if you have this full current of 4 ampere, um, if I would go back to our drawing program here and maybe have a, have a second page. Um, so if we have we have now this resistance of 0 0.1 ohm approximately, right? A little more, 0 0.11 or 12. And if we would have a current of 4 ampere, um, how could we calculate power loss in this inductor? Uh, just due to the resistance of this inductor. So. Electrical power is you, uh, yeah, or, or uh, voltage times current. And voltage is um, current divided by, no, uh, voltage is current times resistance. So current times resistance times current gives us current squared times resistance. So if we would calculate it here, we get 16 uh, ampere squared times the 0 0.1 volt divided by ampere. So one of these amperes will cancel each other and we would get 1.6 watt. Yeah, which is not too much, but the 1.6 watt would be dissipated in our coil that we have here. So it will get warm. That's the problem. Uh, and I mean, that's why this is what is uh, probably limiting the current there. Okay, so this is one sample. Um, then I have another. Um, I know I have another sample here, so maybe I can try to hold this closer to the camera. Um, this is a so-called ring core. This is also quite interesting. 
Um, because here the advantage is that the coil, um, yeah, I would not say is shielded, but somehow like this. So here, I, I would guess a problem with this coil is that some of the magnetic field lines would close outside of the coil. And so if you have sensitive equipment and components close to this coil, they might be influenced by the magnetic field of this coil. So here in this ring coil, the, the whole magnetic field is closed into this ring. The, the magnetic field itself does like a loop. Um, and yeah, the wire is round around there. So we can also try to measure the resistance and inductance of this coil. And as you can see, it's also not too bad. Uh, 185 micro Henry and uh, even a very, very small resistance because this is just um, a short and thick piece of wire. Still, you get quite high inductance because of the core material and the magnetic field amplification, let's say, inside this inside this core. So this is something typical that you would use for filters, let's say. Um, and I have another filter that we can have a look later on. And no, this is some inductor. Um, then what I have here, uh, this is some, some small coil that looks like a resistor, but it's no resistor. I, I think hopefully it should be a coil. Um, and according to this colored rings, you could now check what value this is, but I would just connect it here and see what we get. So now we get something like 20, uh, 32 micro Henry and 0 0.8 ohm, not too bad for such a small inductor. And then, uh, so the last thing that I have, or maybe the second to last is this self-made coil that I've already shown before. So we have just a wire uh, wound to some, to some coil. And so what we could do here maybe is also, let me change my camera view a little bit. Um, so I have brought some calipers to, to measure this. Um, and here also the old engineering rule applies. Devices work better if you switch them on. Um, and then this one needs to be zeroed. Okay. So the, the length of this coil The length, as you can see, is approximately something like 20 millimeters. I think it's blinking because the battery is empty. I'm not sure. And the diameter is something like 10, maybe a little less because I'm now measuring the outer diameter, right? Okay. And if you count, um, oh, difficult to say, one, two, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Of I think it's twelve. Twelve windings. I will give it to Francesco. Francesco will count. But I think it's it should be twelve. So. Um. Twelve. It's it's twelve, right? Okay. So I, I will place it here. Someone can make a screenshot and, and check if it's 12. But it should be 12. And so maybe lo let's go back to um, our empty sheet here. And so let's write down the values. We have a length of 20 millimeters. We have a diameter of approximately 10 millimeter. And we have a number of windings of 12. Any idea 
to how to calculate the inductance of such a coil. Second. Second. Um, yeah. Number. Yeah. So okay, we would we would need to have. Um, yeah. So we get the magnetic flux n times, um, but but let's say from these parameters. Um, and I would also not have this formula in my mind, but if we check the English Wikipedia for inductor and uh, scroll down a little bit, then we find all, uh, all, all, um, all different equations and applications of inductors and air core inductors. Yeah, this looks fairly similar to what we have built right now. And somewhere there is also a formula um, so here we have our law of induction and resistance and corner frequency and stuff like this. Um, okay, and here. Here we have the cylindrical air core coil. So this is the formula that we need. This was, this was the wrong keyboard shortcut, this is the right one. So let's copy this one over here. And so we need uh, mu zero. Um, we, we, we will not include the Nagaoka coefficient. I've never heard of this, uh, to be honest. So, but we need to take the, the number of turns squared because this is some important factor because yeah, so the, the, the field of one turn will also interact with the field of another turn and so on. So the more turns you have, um, the better. So turns influence, influence each other. So then we need this A is the area of the cross section. How do we get the area of the cross section of my... Uh, Exactly, a quarter of pi or pi multiplied with the diameter squared and then the length. Okay, and so mu zero is given, it's four times pi times 10 to the power of minus seven or approximately, it's not this exactly anymore, but approximately and here it's Henry per meter. I will write Henry as volt seconds divided by ampere in meter. Then we get the 12 squared. Then we get P divided by four. This four interestingly will cancel the other four here. And so we get somehow P squared. And our diameter, which is um, 10 times 10 to the power of minus three meter squared and then divided by uh, the length and the length is 20 times 10 to the power of minus 3 meter and so meter meter and meter square will cancel each other and we get volt seconds per ampere which is uh, at the end the same as henry maybe i should have just left the henry as it was and the remaining things need to be calculated and so, as usual, I will do this in Octave. Maybe make my Octave window here a little smaller and uh, move it here to the top. Uh, or maybe move it here to this side. So, uh, L is 20 millimeter, diameter is 10 millimeter, mu zero is four times P times 10 to the power of minus seven. And so then our inductance, n, n, n is 12. And so our inductance of the air coil should be mu zero multiplied with n squared multiplied with um, p, p divided by four times the diameter squared divided by the length, if I'm not mistaken. Sounds does not look too bad. So we get seven point something times ten to the power of minus 
7 Henry and if I multiply this with 10 to the power of 6 we should get 0 0.71 micro Henry. Okay, excellent. So uh, let me write this here 0 0.71 micro Henry. This is what we should get. So let's go back to the experiment. Um, here once again is my LCR meter. This is the coil, and if I connect the coil, the air coil to the thing here. Okay, and we get 0.77 something micro Henry. Interestingly, we get a negative equivalent resistance, which does not make too much sense, to be honest. Um, but I'm not sure what the problem there is. Maybe it's a little bit miscalibrated. We can try to if see what happens if we put them directly together. Yeah, then we get also something negative. So there's probably a problem with the calibration there. Okay, so but this looks meaning still meaningful for our uh, for our air core inductor. Okay, so now what I've also have what I also have is a steel screw that directly fits in there. So what would you think what will happen if I put the screw inside this? It will enhance the inductance because this is a set made of steel, made of iron. Um, this has some higher permeability. So if I put this in there, we get to 2.7 something. And so this would correspond to that in the formula here, we would change the mu um, to something to something higher. And so you can see um, that if I move this in and out, you can change the inductance um, gradually and increase or decrease it. So if if you would uh, yeah if you would have to screw somewhere with a thread so you can move it in and out you would have a variable inductor where you can change the inductance by turning a screw in there in and out okay so that's a small experiment with measuring inductances um, with this nice LCR meter